Now, in the wake of the January 6th attack on the Capitol and former President Trump's attempts to overturn the 2020 election, some analysts are raising concerns about the state of American democracy. In the last decade, the United States has seen its ranking on the global freedom score plummet. That is a metric published by Freedom House. It ranks countries based on their political rights and civil liberties. Freedom House warns that the United States is facing an acute crisis for democracy. Let us bring in Carol Anderson to talk more about this. She is a Charles Howard Candler professor and chair of African American Studies at Emory University. Uh, professor, thanks so much for being with us. Many say that the threat to American democracy did not begin with President Trump. Uh, where do you believe the crisis began or how do you track where we are today? What were the early signs that led to this moment? Uh, we could all we could go all the way back to the beginning of American history, um, where we had slavery and this this violation of our concepts of of democracy there. But in the modern day era, I would track it to the rise of the Southern strategy, where you had Southern Democrats being wooed into the Republican Party after the passage of the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, because what that did was it made legitimate the illegitimate aims of those who would deny the basic civil liberties and civil rights to African Americans. You know, often when we think about an attack on democracy, there's a focus on voting and elections. But you say that we should consider this a multi-pronged attack, right? And a land, sea, and air attack. So what is the land, what is the sea, what is the air? How, how is democracy being attacked? And so what I see there is that the land attack is the assault on voting rights. After the 2020 election, you saw a wave of states, these Republican legislatures, in fact, enact and propose voter suppression laws that were going after the massive voter turnout that happened in 2020, going after the people who voted and who did not vote for Donald Trump. And so you saw these laws going after the ways African-Americans voted, the ways that indigenous people voted, the ways that Latinos voted, the way that Asian-Americans voted, the ways that young people and, and poor people voted. You see these attacks on our basic right to vote. That's the land attack. The C attack is the washing away, this legislation that wants to wash away the teaching of real American history so that we don't understand how we got here. We don't understand um, the, the, the battles that created the United States of America. We don't understand slavery. We don't understand Jim Crow. We won't understand xenophobia. We won't understand all of these battles to, in fact, make America's aspirations become an achievement. And so when you wash away that history, what it does is it creates a foundation, a historical foundation to say that only whites built this nation and that this nation emerged fully grown, fully great, fully perfect. And so that anybody saying, these are the things we need to do in order to form a more perfect union, then that will become like, what are they talking about? And so that will become, that, that gets dismissed. And then the, the air attack are the loosening of these gun laws um, that we're seeing happening in Georgia, in Texas, in Tennessee, while you also have the Republican, uh, the RNC talking about that political violence that we saw on January 6th is legitimate political discourse. And when you think about it, you had Reuters doing an analysis of the attacks and the assaults on election workers. And how many times did we hear, we're going to use our Second Amendment rights to get you back for what you did? Mm -hmm. And so that's the land, sea, and air attack that is happening on American democracy right now. Professor, let me ask you a question because you uh, speak of history. Um, our founders, the founding fathers, uh, the the way we, when the country was founded, we couldn't vote. You and I couldn't vote, uh, even though in our founding documents, it purported to suggest that all men, men, are created equal, even though that we know then that they did not uh, consider all peoples equal. Um, I wonder, though, as we have progressed to a state of play where we are increasingly a diverse a multi-ethnic society. Uh, we have people of color on the Supreme Court of the United States. 
We have people of color and women uh, as our representative, elected representatives. I wonder if the institutions that were put in place by the founding fathers imagined that we would strive every year from the founding of our country to be a more perfect union. Mm -hmm. And the fact that these institutions still exist in the way that the founders thought of them is in some ways part of the difficulty or part of the challenge that we're facing now. Does that, does my question make sense? Yeah, it's like, you know, after the attack on the Capitol, there were kind of multiple schools of thought and the professor can speak to this, but you know, the, the hope was that the center will hold, right. that these institutions will pull it all back together. And now we're asking, you know, is that happening? And, and so, I don't know, Professor, right. you can it, probably... It just, like, for example, you know, the state of Montana has as much political capital because of their two United States senators as the state of California or the state of New York or the state of Texas or Florida, even though those demographics and those populations are very different. I don't... I wonder if the founders considered that we would achieve a more perfect union, and every year we're trying to do that, but the institutions that they created have not been able to keep up with it, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. And I think that what we're really seeing is that the people themselves envisioned a more perfect union. Mm -hmm. And so the, to me, the story of America is the way that the people fought for this more mm. perfect union. The way that you saw women demanding the right to vote, demanding equality, the way that you saw African-Americans demanding the right to vote, demanding equality and pressing on this system, finding these levers within this system in order to open it up. And, and so the battle has been is that to want to erase those battles, to want to erase um, the, the fissures within American society um, and to make it seem as if it came out fully grown, fully perfect. Like I say, like Athena out of Zeus's head. Mm. Uh, Professor Carroll. It's such an interesting conversation. I know. We, I, we could talk a lot more, but we're yeah. running out of time. It's a yeah. conversation for a podcast, I say, yes. uh, Carol Anderson. Um, thank you very much. Thank you so much.